For this video, we have a problem that is kind of like this thing I have here. I have some weights over here attached to the string and the string goes through this tube right here. At the other end of the string, I have a rubber stopper. And uh, if I whirl this thing around, the rubber stopper goes around and this weight hanging here provides uh, the tension in the string and the tension in the string pulls towards the center that provides the centripetal force for the rubber stopper to do circular motion. Now, if I go too fast, see the weight goes up. If I go too slowly, the weight goes down. But if I maintain it at appropriate speed, this weight can stay in equilibrium at the same place. That means that mg equals to tension because the weight has no acceleration. And that mg provides the tension to keep it in circular motion. Of course, in reality, there is also gravity acting on the rubber stopper. So that's why the string is actually slanted like this. That means the tension on the stopper is actually slanted too. So you can see that the string is slanted because of the gravity pulling on the rubber stopper. For this particular problem, in order for us to not have to worry about the slanting of the string, we're changing the rubber stopper to an air puck on an air table. This hole at the center of the table allows the string to go through so we can hang a weight here. We use air table so friction can be negligible and the normal force can cancel with the mg. And therefore, we get to avoid having to deal with a slanted string. So let's say the puck that goes around and does circular motion has a mass of little m. The weight that is hung under has a mass big M. If the radius of the circular motion is big R, what must the speed of the puck be to keep big M at rest? Let's follow the problem solving procedures. The big M stays at rest so the big M has uh, no acceleration. But that's not the same for the little m. The little m does circular motion, so it has a centripetal acceleration that goes uh, towards the center. So this is the first problem we've seen so far that has uh, the two objects in the system have two different accelerations. They don't even have the same magnitude of acceleration. Okay, so let's see. For the force diagram of the big M, we have the big M G and uh, the tension. Now this is the same string, so the tension is the same over here. For the little m, we don't really have to draw the vertical forces because we have a horizontal acceleration. If you do draw the vertical forces, of course you have mg, the little mg and normal force, they cancel anyway. So we just need to draw the horizontal force. The horizontal force is the tension from the string. And these two t's are the same because it's the same string. Now let's write the net force equals to ma. For the big M, we just have T and mg being equal because the acceleration is zero. For the little m, we just need to write the net force equals to ma in the horizontal direction. The net force in the horizontal direction is big T, the tension, and that equals to ma, and this is the centripetal acceleration, which means uh, we can use uh, v squared over r for it. In the past, sometimes when we have two boxes in a system, we would write the force equation for each one and then stack them and then add them together. But in this case, it doesn't make sense to add those two together because they have different accelerations. So in this case, we just have to say, okay, we found the tension, that's mg, and then plug it into this. So the big T is uh, mg. 
equals to m little m times the v squared over r. And what we want is the speed of the little m. So we can just uh, solve for v. That would be square root. If we multiply by r on both sides, and then divide by little m on both sides, and that will give us v squared. So we take square root. That's the speed. And that's it. Now let's just take a look at the slanted strings case. So this is like the demonstration I did. The rubber stopper has little m for mass. The weight that's hung under is a big M. And this little m goes around in this circle. The string is slanted. So in this case, the acceleration will go towards the center and that will go horizontal because the circle is a horizontal circle. And that's the center right here for this horizontal circle. So that's why it points towards the center. The acceleration is horizontal. And then let's draw the force diagram. You would have mg and it's touching just the string tension. So what happens in this case is uh, we would have to find the components of the slanted force. So you have to find the components by making this uh, rectangle. And that will be the horizontal component and the vertical component of the tension. But when you write the net force equals to ma in the x direction, this tension's component would provide m times the centripetal acceleration. And then in the vertical direction, there is no acceleration. That means uh, the tension's upward component would equal to mg, so they cancel. So it's just more complicated if the string is slanted. But to solve a problem like this, it, you still follow the same problem-solving procedures.